If you remember dancing Trade Federation chairs, your little brother slowing you down in the pod race, and smacking poor Jar Jar around, then you grew up playing Lego Star Wars. But which one? Because there were six games released across 19 different consoles, and in this video series, we're going to compare each of them. Now, most of these games are comprised of several Star Wars movies, sometimes the entire saga. So I decided the best way to compare them would be to break them up by movie and dedicate a video to each episode. And so in this video, we're comparing every version of the Phantom Menace in LEGO Star Wars games. Okay, let's start with the first depiction of Episode 1 in the original LEGO Star Wars and the complete saga. The game begins with Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon being ambushed by the Trade Federation. Whoa, what happened to Obi-Wan's arm there? One of the standout things about the original LEGO Star Wars is the amount of Easter eggs scattered throughout the game, starting with this furniture that dances when you use the Force. You know, while slowly dying of Dioxus poisoning? Hey, maybe they're just hallucinating while the gas slowly paralyzes their nervous system. So the two Jedi make their way through the level, solving puzzles and chopping up battle droids. They then take on some droidicas, which kind of look like uh, deck chairs in this one, and then it's down to the planet's surface where the Jedi take out some of their rage on poor Jar Jar. <laughs> And look, he can't even fight back in this game, all he can do is jump really high. So even if you're not bullying him, he's going to die a lot. I'm playing this without music to avoid copyright claims and it gets really eerie just hearing Jar Jar's endless death screams. <laughs> Oh yes, a beautiful statue to remember our time on Naboo. Master, I think you built it wrong. Shut up, boy. You still have much to learn. Speaking of voices, there are none in these early games, which means the characters have to pantomime their way through the plot. There's no Autogunga level. Instead, we go straight to Theed, where the Queen and Captain Panaka try to get away from the droid army, using backwards megaphones as blasters. Hold on, where exactly did Panaka just pull that blaster from? Oh, and back it goes. Poor Captain Panaka, they gave him the most generic Lego face. Look at him, he's so happy that his planet's under hostile occupation. Hmm, guess they must have used up all the designs on the Queen. And you'd think the woman with the biggest wardrobe in the galaxy would wear something that draws a little less attention to herself as she sneaks around the city, instead of, you know, dressing like Michael Jackson from Thriller. Okay, so they get to Tatooine, meet nine-year-old Anakin, who's the same size as a six-foot-five Qui-Gon Jinn. And it's straight to the pod race. Growing up, this was one of those levels you were stuck on forever, especially if you were playing it with your younger sibling. Doesn't matter how good you get, the game will always pull you back to the other player. Oh no, Sebulba won. Well, I guess he's going to get adopted and taken to the Jedi Council. <laughs> Eventually, Anakin wins the pod race. We skip Coruscant altogether and go straight to Naboo. It makes sense, it would be really tough to convey concepts such as the return of an ancient religious order and the Queen calling for a vote of no confidence in the Senate using Lego figures that can't talk. The next level has our heroes trying to get back into the palace. Ah, poor Captain Panaka, two days away from retirement, taken out by a garden deck chair. Of all the Phantom Menace levels, this is probably the most tedious. Mainly because you had to get all the characters past these various different obstacles. And each one would get stuck at a different part of the level. For example, Anakin is the only one who can get into these crawl spaces. Despite being, you know, the same size as everyone else. And then it's time for the Darth Maul fight. Notice how he never removes his hood? That's because they didn't actually have a horn piece built for him yet. Obi-Wan, little help? Uh, you know what? I'll just do this myself. Hey, come back, come back. God, I feel like his debt collector. Wait, so you can just pull these switches and open the shields? Why didn't Qui-Gon do this in the movie instead of taking a nap? But despite taking on more together, the outcome is still the same and Qui-Gon dies. They don't show the funeral scene, so it kind of looks like everyone's celebrating Qui-Gon's death. There's also this bonus mission which didn't make it into the original game. This one's pretty simple. You fly around collecting these purple orbs and then use them to blow up a bunch of stuff in and around the control ship. And that's it for the original. However, there was also a Phantom Menace section in the Game Boy Advance version of the original game. The levels are now isometric and the puzzles have been simplified. Swapping characters is still a big part of the gameplay, but now you do it in the menu. And the hardware limitation meant they couldn't really have more than one character on the screen, so the old character just blows up to make way for the new one. Also, when you die, you're taken back to the beginning of the stage instead of just respawning. There's no pacifist Jar Jar in this one, instead he throws bombs. Also, each character will have a skill that's unique to them. For example, Qui-Gon will have invisibility, 
Obi-Wan will have force push, and Jar Jar will just run around screaming with his arms flailing. The isometric perspective does make jumping a bit of a pain in the ass. Some of the levels are different as well. You don't get a pod race, instead you get these three levels on Tatooine, where Qui-Gon cuts down a bunch of Tuscans. Ah, so that's where Anakin learns it from. Get away from my car, you savages. I've still got down payments to make on it. All in all, I think they did a pretty good job adapting the console experience to the Game Boy Advance. There was also a version of LEGO Phantom Menace for the Nintendo DS, released as part of the Complete Saga port. Now this version is much closer to the console game. The controls are almost identical, except you use the touch screen for force powers. The levels are also very similar, with some streamlining. Even the graphics aren't that bad, it kind of looks like the main game if it had come out on Nintendo 64. I mean, yes, the cutscenes now look like paper cutouts, and there are only five levels in episode one instead of six. They left out the Jar Jar level. But you still get the pod race, which is now top down. All right, moving on, we have the Skywalker Saga released 17 years after the original. This was part remake and part reimagining. And of course, it all starts with the Phantom Menace. The first thing to jump out at you is of course the huge improvement in graphics. But the game is still based around these relatively simple looking Legos, only now they're really high res with all this dynamic lighting. The difference between the original and this game kind of reminds me of the difference between watching Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 4. To be fair, the Lego designs have also changed in the past 17 years, and this is reflected in the game. When the originals had come out, Lego only had the license to Star Wars for about six years, so many of the minifigures and the kits had to be designed specifically for the game. At this point, we've had over two decades of Lego Star Wars, so pretty much every aspect from the movie has been turned into Lego. In some cases, many, many times. This means the vehicle designs have been refined to look a lot closer to the movie, and the characters also have a lot more detail to them. For example, Qui-Gon still has the same hairpiece. In the original, his and Obi-Wan's costumes were identical except for Obi-Wan's braid. Now you can tell they are slightly different. They even gave Qui-Gon these little strands of grey hair in his beard and Obi-Wan his butt chin. Look, even the capes have that little fold thing that you get on the minifigures in real life. This game goes out of its way to make it look like you're actually playing with a real Lego set. Now this one also begins with the Jedi arriving on the boot, but you can actually fly the ship this time. Hey, I've got an idea. Screw the Nine Mordians, let's just go straight to the Queen. God damn it, stupid canonical accuracy. And yes, you can still make the chairs dance. The original game had very basic controls, jump, attack, and the force. The Skywalker Saga expands all of these elements. The attacks now have a combo meter. You can now shoot in first person mode or throw your lightsaber. The force is also a bit more involved. You can pick up objects, crush them, and even stag them. This did take me a while to get used to coming straight from playing the original game. So there were a few times when I was trying to build something, but just ended up throwing it at poor Obi-Wan one's head. The game does also add some basic RPG elements like these uh, skill trees. It definitely makes it feel like a modern video game, which is great. But to me, it did take away a little from that pick up and play appeal that the early Lego games were so famous for. I guess the trade off is that you get these nice new gameplay elements like being able to cut the circle in the door of your lightsaber. Well, I say circle. <laughs> It's also nice to see the droidicars don't look like deck chairs anymore. Okay, so down to the planet's surface where we meet Jar Jar. So is this uh, an updated version of the old level? No, nope, you just walk straight into the water. But you do get the Otagunga level this time around. And you can even channel the original PlayStation 1 game and murder all the Gungans. Plus, Obi-Wan can now uh, mind control the uh, big duck things. All right, here's Boss Naz. Take that, old man. How do you like that for punishment? Now, Otagunga, like most levels in the Skywalker saga, are a lot more open. Open, allowing you to explore, talk to the characters, and unlock a bunch of stuff. And when you're done, you jump into the Unabongo, right after Jar Jar withdraws some cash from an ATM. You then get a little mini mission as the Jedi get away from the big fish, and then they arrive at Theed, which is another level you can explore before continuing on with the story. Ah, Captain Panaka, so good to see you with a better face. So you escort the Queen to the hangar, and we're off to Tatooine. For a guy who's being hunted by the Sith, Qui-Gon looks incredibly chill. Look at his smug grin. I'm about to doom the entire galaxy. Also, that's a nice farmer disguise you've got there, Qui-Gon, but do you wanna maybe hide the giant dangling lightsaber hilt? Moss Esper is another open level, so you can run around doing all sorts of bits and pieces. Hey, Watto, I'm looking for a hyperdrive generator. Oh, hold on, I don't think that's Watto. Ah, that's better, and here's little Anakin, who's actually little this time around. 
and I've never seen a kid so happy to take a crate straight to the head. Of course, having dialogue does allow the game to get across some of the finer story points. And speaking of voice acting, it's nice to have it, but some of the lip sync is, well... When I was a kid, I made my own pod racer by strapping a trailer to the back of two Womp Rats. The pod race is more of an actual race this time. You have full control of the vehicle, instead of the game just hurling you forward. But you still need to hit the speed boost. With that done, we actually get to visit Coruscant this time. They uh, took away Amidala's legs in this one, so she just scoots around like a giant hockey puck. Now, Coruscant is the largest open area you explore in the game. It's not technically open, instead it's connected by several hubs that you can reach via a taxi. But it's still really cool to run around the place and, uh, you know, steal lampposts. Ah, oh, look at Palpatine, what a good sport he absolutely doesn't mind that I'm destroying his apartment. Huh, this part is just completely walled off, almost as if he's hiding something. Qui-Gon then takes Anakin to the council. There are only three of them this time. I guess the others are working from home. And then it's back to Naboo. There's no feed infiltration level. Instead, we go straight to the battle against Maul. And it's a bit more of an actual battle this time around. You've got things like dodge, parry, and saber struggle. Oh, look, he just decapitated Qui-Gon. That's way worse than what happens in the movie. There's also this cool bit where you swap between the two Jedi, but don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of instances where Darth Maul buggers off and leaves you fighting the droids. Oh, ah, crap, I backflipped into the hole. Oh, and look, Maul goes straight after me. Don't worry, mate, you'll be there in a second. Also, this game still has plenty of the trademark Lego slapstick silliness, like a uh, half a Darth Maul stabbing Qui-Gon. Yeah, <laughs> isn't murder funny, kids? You also get a Starfighter level in this one. It's a bit more involved than the original, but not by much. Anakin just flies around blowing up comm towers and droid Starfighters before getting into the main hangar and shooting the generators. And finally, you get to play through the Gungan battle. This one is also pretty straightforward. You find the bombs, then load them, and then shoot them at the droid army. And that's pretty much it for the Phantom Menace portion of the Skywalker Saga game. This version definitely encompasses more of the actual story from the movie than the original. However, unlike the original, which focuses on distinct levels connected by a hub world, this one has a bunch of open levels you're encouraged to explore. If you're not into that, most of your playthrough will consist of you just running to the waypoint and an occasional action sequence, at least until the third act. But this version still has its fair share of easter eggs. Some of my favorites include Qui-Gon Jinn, starring in Taken, I have a particular set of skills, finding the first game in the swamp, and the droid orchestra playing Jewel of the Fates. Oh no, I've got to stop them before I get a copyright claim. Stop! 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 And so there we have it, every incarnation of the Phantom Menace in LEGO games. Stay tuned for the next part where I cover Attack of the Clones, but in the meantime, please let me know your favorite memories from these games and which of them you prefer in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.